Hello students, welcome to the class. Today I am going to discuss uh, about adaptation and that is your chapter number 8. Chapter number 8, adaptation. First of all, what do you mean by adaptations? What is the meaning of adaptation? Adaptation means to get suited in a particular environment okay so suppose I am going okay so this is a hot environment and I'm going to an some cold environment okay so that is uh, to the another country okay so which uh, the country is uh, full of cold okay so I'm going winter seasons are going on okay so when I'm going at that place I am adapting myself to that environment okay so I am uh, making suitable myself to that particular I'm adjusting myself to that environment okay so that is called an adaptation adaptations are behavior or a characteristics also we can say our behavior or a characteristics which uh, uh, which we change according to our surroundings okay which we change according to our surroundings and we get fitted in that surrounding okay so that is called adaptation we are adapting it okay we are taking it okay so that makes organism the best suited to it to its way of life okay so adaptation makes the organisms to be best suited in their life okay fish for example fish is having fins and tails okay which is an adapter which is an adaptation so how they can swim okay so they are swimming through the tail and the, with the help of a tail and fill, uh, fins okay example you can take gills also okay so fish fish are having gills okay instead of lungs okay when the water pass through the gills they suck out the they take out the oxygen from the water and leaves the rest of the water in the pond itself pond seas or rivers okay etc so in the lakes okay so we are having every human beings are having what uh, according to the our surroundings we, because we are not an aquatic okay so we are not an aquatic okay so we are living on the land okay so that's why we are having a lunch we are having a lunch because we are not going to take in water and we are not going to take the oxygen from the water okay direct from the environment we are taking water that's why we are having lungs that is called an adaptation different animals are having different adaptations okay according to their surroundings according to their environment okay some are natural adaptations and some we adapt ourselves to get adjusted by that surroundings okay so that is called an adaptations now aquatic plants okay so aquatic plants you can see you can see the aquatic plants is very soft okay and very light okay always floats over on the water okay so aquatic plants that is a water plant aquatic means aqua means water okay so aquatic plants is a water plant which grows in water okay which grows in water at that time what happens you get you see the plants water plants are floating over the water okay why this is floating because it is very light and if you see the stems of the floating water the floating i mean um, that aquatic plant it is very uh, spongy okay very spongy since the spongy is very light which doesn't suck the water and becomes heavy okay so it over uh, it doesn't become very heavy it what happens it floats on the water like a sponge okay so that is the aquatic plant adaptation okay for example you can see the land plant okay the land plant the stems of the land plant is not very spongy it is very hard and it is very thick okay compared to the aquatic plant okay the roots of the aquatic plants are very short because they need not need not to grow longer for the search of water okay so but the roots of the land plants are very longer okay so they search of they search for water under the ground okay so since in the case of aquatic plant it is not like that okay aquatic plants contains uh, coating over coating over they are uh, coating over over the plant okay that is like uh, you can say raincoat okay so vexing subexy substances okay which prevent them to rot in a water which prevent them to take extra absorbed water and to get rotten in the water okay so that wax prevents as we prevent ourselves from uh, rain by wearing raincoat the same way the wax substances Vexy substances uh, over the, I mean, um, coated over the aquatic plant, which prevents th them to get rotten in the water. Okay, so that is their aquatic, that is their aquatic nature, aquatic plants nature. Okay, the leaves of the such plants have a vexy coating. Okay, like a raincoat, which protects them from water. Otherwise, they would rot with so much water around. Okay, so now fish. So fish, you can say 
Fish can breathe in water. How fish can breathe in water? At the, I told you at the beginning itself through the gills. Okay, so through gills. They take in water through mouth and throw it out through their gills. Okay, so you have seen fish always takes the water through the mouth and they throw the water through their gills. Okay, so when they throw, throw out the water through their gills at that time, whatever the oxygen present inside the water, it sucks. It takes out all the oxygen and leaves the extra water. Okay, so like like this the fish breathe inside the water as the water passes over the gills the gills absorb oxygen and mixed in water carbon dioxide collected in gills mixes with the water and passed out okay now swimming swimming okay so the body of a fish now body of a fish has many features that help in swim okay so since they are aquatic uh, aquatic organism aquatic organism fish is an aquatic organism so what happens the body is adapted in such way that it can swim 24 into 7 in the water we cannot we cannot swim okay if we don't learn swim we cannot go into the water and swim okay so uh, the fish but uh, fish uh, fish body is adapted in such way that it can swim it has a tail which helps them to swim it has a I mean fins okay which helps them to uh, swim properly in the water other animals which swim well have adaptation that help the swim ducks frogs are the example okay you can see ducks and frogs ducks are having webbed feet okay that means the feet so the feet are joined together okay so with a skin okay so that is a web fit so it helps them to swim in a water very nicely so when they swim in the water at that time the water doesn't get passed to their uh, i mean feet okay so that is called web fit ducks are having web fit okay and and push them forward okay so whenever they swim in the water they push their body forward and the same time the water doesn't get passed to their feet okay so now if they had toes they would not join by skins water would simply pass to the toes okay so if they have the toes okay so i mean without the skin okay without the web one okay so they will not be able to pass they will not be able to swim properly in the water the water will pass will be passed away from the toes okay so now desert plant plants that grow in desert or very dry places are adapted to cope with storage of water so since we know desert is a very dry place hardly we get water hardly you get water in the desert areas okay so there is a no storage properly in the desert area so desert area normal plant okay cannot be cannot survive in the desert okay because the desert plants are separate okay so like cactus you can see cacti okay so there is a desert plant okay so they have their certain adaptations okay you know that plant lose water through the stomata or their leaves we know that plant lose water through their store through the stomata okay which is present under the leaves okay stomata means a tiny holes okay through which uh, through which i mean uh, the water get passed away as we sweat you no know, from inside our body uh, through skin the, we get sweat outside you no know, whenever we feel heat you not know, that time what happens uh, uh, our uh, sweat okay we sweat a lot okay the same way plants also have tiny pores that is called a stomata which is present under the leaves okay through that the plant uh, i mean through that plant uh, i mean passes the loses water okay so the larger the leaf the more water plant loses so many desert plants have leaves cut into thin stripes they also have long root to help them uh, gather as much as water as possible cacti survive well in desert okay they have uh, spines which are special leaves and reduce loss of water okay they also store water in the thick spongy stems okay desert plants are very thick and very spongy okay so they store the water in the thick spongy leaves and the leaves got uh, thick spongy stem okay so and the leaves are adapted into like spines okay so that the water doesn't get passed very easily in the uh, desert okay so it is very hard to get water in the desert okay so it conserves all the water and the water because of the hot environment the water doesn't come out uh, because it isn't having the, the leaves are modified into spines okay and it doesn't have a that much i mean pores uh, which the leaf is having in a normal land conditions okay 
so the desert plants having a very spongy and very thick stem and uh, which stores the water not only that they are having a very long i mean root which sucks the water and stores the water in, okay and the leaves are uh, modified into spines that is an adaptation okay so it, the leaves are modified okay so modified to a spine which uh, doesn't allow water to pass out okay now camels desert animals you can the most uh, the more famous animal uh, desert animal is camel what happens in the camel they are having a very long legs okay camels are having very long legs which keeps their body away from the sand okay desert sand because desert is a very hot place okay they keep their body away because of the long leg no their body is uh, on the top side okay which uh, doesn't get that much heat from the uh, desert uh, from that much heat from the sand okay so not only that they are having a um, long eyelids okay which prevents their eye from the sand okay so it can drink a lot of water at one go okay so passes very little urine okay so uh, camel drinks a lot of water at one time itself one go at a one go at a one time a camel can drink a lots of water so okay, liters and liters of water okay and it passes very little urine because when the uh, whenever uh, we uh, normally whenever people or the animals takes lots of water they pass urine i mean often okay they pass the urine a lot of urine okay so but camel doesn't do because it stores water inside its body okay so it, it stores water inside its body so, so that uh, for a uh, for one or two days if uh, the camel doesn't get any water in the desert places because it is very hard to get uh, water in the desert places at that time the stored water can be used okay it stores food in the form of a fat in its hump okay so hump you have seen in the uh, camel that uh, <coughs> top one okay so the hump that is called hump okay which is uplifted on the upward okay so that is a hump there the fat has been stored okay so whatever the camel is eating lots of foods it eating no at that time what happens the fat gets stored in the hump so that if the camel get shortage of water in the desert shortage of food in the desert the energy can be the fat can be used as an energy that is also a kind of adaptation since uh, the land animals normal land animals doesn't have that kind of adaptation does any other animal is having a hum uh, hum to i mean <clears throat> hump to uh, i mean store any fat no it's not like that because normal uh, area land normal environment uh, land animals they are getting uh, food uh, in a proper uh, proper time okay so in desert in case of desert it is not like that okay it is a very no water no food scarcity of water and scarcity of food will be <coughs> will be there in the desert okay very hardly they get water and uh, food the cold climate so in the cold climate so you can the desert time in camel cannot go into the cold climate and live and cold climate animals cannot organisms come into the desert and live they have their adaptation characteristics and behavior according to their environments according to their surroundings okay so cold climate you can say polar bears penguins all these lives in the arctic region okay that is icy i see cold so nature has fitted them with a thick coat of fur okay so penguins are having very thick fur okay which protects them from the winter which protects them from the cold not only that they are having a huge amount of fat storage under their skin okay which also protects them from cold okay so penguins and uh, polar bears are, are they are in the arctic region okay so they are made for the arctic regions they cannot go into the desert place and the survive okay because their adaptation their behavior and their characteristics are made according to their environment now migrations so migration means moving from one place to another transferring uh, organism from one place to another some birds okay some birds migrate uh, due to the environment environmental conditions okay so some bird in the summer season okay from winter seasons they transfer themselves in the summer summer season environment conditions okay to get proper food to get adapted in that certain environment okay so now some animals travels or migrate from one place to another avoid very cold climate to avoid the climate or to avoid <laughs> unnecessary unnecessary uh, i mean uh, climatic conditions they transfer they move they, uh, they travel from one place to another for example many birds fly hundreds of miles to india and other warm countries in winter so <coughs> 
hundreds of uh, many birds hundreds of miles they travel they fly, fly themselves okay to avoid the cold climatic conditions fly uh, birds from india to other other countries okay so to avoid the warm conditions or to avoid the winter uh, conditions according to their needs okay so these winter visitors or migratory birds are the delight of uh, uh, bird watch uh, bird watchers in our country birds often migrate from one place to another within our country too especially from the Himalayas Himalayas to northern plains. Okay, so birds not only they migrate hundreds of miles from one country to the another country to avoid the climate uh, to avoid the climate which is not suitable for them. They they also migrate in the within the country also. Okay, so within the country from Himalayas to northern plains they migrate. Okay, which makes a uh, tourist attracts okay so which makes so, so that's why we say no in this particular area this is a tourist season okay so because of that migratory birds people come uh, people come all over the india people come all over the country to visit the migratory birds okay so from one place to another place they are traveling and they are avoiding whichever they are not suited for it okay so that is a migrate migrations okay suppose if i don't like a cold climate okay so cold climate for example i don't like i'm living in himalayas and i don't like the cold climates and hilly areas okay so i'm migrating from that place to a northern place okay so that is the i'm adjusting myself okay to the another uh, to environment which is suitable for me okay so that is an migrations okay traveling from one place to another to avoid a unnecessary climatic conditions okay so birds the entire body of a bird is adapted to flight it has wings instead of four limbs okay so four limbs <coughs> animals are having four limbs okay that is legs and four limbs we are having that four limbs means the arms you can say so the birds doesn't have the four limbs instead of four limbs they are having wings okay which makes them to fly fly okay so this is a very like the four limbs are very light there is full of feathers okay full of the four limbs are full of feathers and their bones are hollow and very light okay which makes them to float on the uh, on the air okay which makes them to fly on the air okay the bones of birds are hollow to make it light so that it can fly its muscles are strong to help it flap its wings okay so the Mm, the birds muscles are especially the birds four limbs muscles that is uh, four limbs means here the wings okay the wing side muscles are very strong which makes them to fly on the air okay and it has extra little lungs to give it an extra energy to needs to uh, for flying okay so it is a extra air sac okay air sac which makes them to fly very easily which makes them to feel very light and it is a uh, the bones of the bones of birds are very hollow and light which helps them to fly in the air now herbivorous animals herbivorous those animals uh, do uh, the animals which eat only the plants okay they are said to be an herbivorous animals they are completely dependent on plants like cow goat all these things sheep all these things are herbivorous animals okay they do not eat any uh, meat flesh all these things they do not eat only they are completely dependent on the plant materials okay so they do not need sharp edged uh, canines to tear flesh okay so they don't need any canines okay in some uh, canines means first we are having a uh, the front teeth okay the front teeth is said to be an incisors and after the front teeth it comes canine and after that what premolar and the last one is molar okay so they don't need that time in canine okay so uh, the herbivorous animals no uh, that doesn't need any canine okay teeth okay so to tear the flesh okay because they're herbivorous they use their front teeth only that is called incisors okay so much of them do not have canines or have blunt canines okay so many herbivores most of the herbivores animals doesn't have canines okay that is after the incisors after the front teeth whatever the teeth comes that is a canine that doesn't have okay so what happens at that time uh, they don't need they don't uh, have they don't need uh, any use of that canines okay so they have sharp incisors for cutting vegetables matters and uh, large flattish premolars and molar for chewing food they also have some helpful bacteria in a special tumor a special stomach or a part of their intestine their bacteria helps them to digest the food okay digest the matter okay they are also having what uh, um <coughs> i mean a special kind of 
uh, bacteria inside their stomach which uh, makes uh, which makes the food to digest okay so the herbivorous animals the herbivorous animals have to protect themselves from carnivores okay so since the herbivorous animals are completely dependent on the uh, i mean uh, plant materials okay plant based uh, products okay plant based thing play plant things okay plant plant they eat only the plants okay so they have to protect them from the carnivores because carnivores doesn't eat okay uh, i mean uh, they don't eat they are not dependent on the plant okay they are completely dependent on the flesh of the other animals okay so that is the reason why herbivores why herbivores animals are having their eyes on both sides okay you have seen deer okay so they are having both the eyes on bo in both sides okay so that they can see their sides okay if any animal any carnivore uh, carnivorous animal is coming and hunting hunting them okay so carnivore herbivorous animals are having their eyes on their sides okay so this is an adaptation okay so this is how they are made okay to protect themselves from the herbivore to protect themselves from the carnivorous animals some even have guts to burn and rest of the group of dangers okay herbivorous uh, animals have some signs and some symbols okay to burn in a group okay so that some danger is coming move away from here okay so they have some peculiar kind of i mean noises or some kind of sounds they make whenever the now whenever they get the danger sign okay so that kind that kind of behavior and characteristics uh, the herbivorous animals are having now move on moving on to the carnivorous animals since they are they don't eat the plants okay they are completely dependent on the flesh of the other animals they have their eyes okay they have their eyes at front side okay like you can say wolf okay so they have their eyes at front side carnivorous animals have very sharp incisors okay they are having a very sharp incisors okay which tears and which helps them to bite and tear the flesh okay so they hold and kill their prey with large i mean curved pointed canines so they hold and i mean kill their prey with the canine teeth okay while in kahani uh, while in uh, herbivorous animals canines are not there okay or if they have that is very blunt okay? Okay, but in the case of a uh, carnivorous, it is very sharp and very strong. Okay, so because they need to hold the flesh and they need to tear it out. Okay, and crush bones uh, with their massive premolars and molars. Okay, so that is the mm, behind uh, at the last of the jaw we are having. Uh, first is uh, incisors, canine, premolar, and molar. Okay, so premolar and molar also very strong, so that they can crush the bones. Okay, very nicely. The animals usually have very sharp senses of smell and hearing to help them hunt. Okay, so the carnivorous animals are having very sharp like, hearing. Okay, and the uh, senses of hearing. Okay, so if they get a small noise, also a pin drop. If a pin, uh, I mean, uh, if a nettle falls down, no, they can hear it very nicely. Okay, so for the hunting purposes only, they can go and hunt. Okay, their eyes are set in front of their head. Okay, so while in the herbivorous animals, the eyes are side of uh, side in the side. Okay. and here in carnivorous animals at the front of a head okay uh, which helps them to focus better to focus better so which uh, what prey i am going to hunt today so i am going to hunt this one i want to focus in this okay to focus better they have their eyes in front of the head okay so judging distance and remember beaks and mouths the kind of mouth an animal has is connected with the food it eats okay so the mouth the mouth the animals are having it is completely dependent upon their food okay so birds for example have beaks suited to find their mosquitoes flies butterflies and some other insects have a uh, proboscis or uh, tube like mouth that help draw to that helps them to draw liquid okay so what happens the animals are completely the mouth of an animal is completely dependent upon the food what they take okay birds are having a, a beak okay long beak okay which makes them to take the food okay so and uh, like um, some birds are having mosquitoes mosquitoes are having like uh, a proboscis that is a straw like structure okay tube like structure okay which they insert inside the body of an uh, animal and uh, takes the blood okay so like a straw like a straw and protection how we can protect plant protect themselves from their enemies in various ways okay so plant have various ways and various method to protect so since uh, we protect why cannot plant protect okay so themselves that have 
various ways and various uh, methods and various techniques to pro uh, protect uh, from uh, from enemies example you can say uh, protect uh, from enemies is not like that plant is going to fight over the enemy and get protected it's not like that it is the way it gets pr prevented from the enemies it's like that uh, you have seen the papaya plant okay so papaya in a papaya plant some kind of juices comes when you cut the papaya plant when you take out the leaf of a papaya plant what happens some whitish colored juice comes which makes irritate which makes irritate to the other animals okay whenever some animals come to attack okay come to eat the leaf of a papaya plant when it breaks out you no know, at that time the sticky juice comes out from the papaya tree and the animal gets irritated of that juice and leaves that plant and goes away so like this they are having prevention methods okay so like uh, banyan and fig pap Pro banyan, not only papaya, banyan and fig, they also produce some sticky, juicy substances. Plants like tulsi and mint, okay, they are having a very strong smell, okay. Whenever the animal comes to, uh, I mean, pluck, whenever the animals comes to eat the tulsi and uh, this one, uh, mint, no, they feel a very strong smell and they go away from, uh, go away from that plant that doesn't eat that plant, okay. So these are all the preventions, okay. So these are all the prevention plants are having, these are all the techniques the plants having, okay. And neem, neem and bitter guard, okay. So neem and bitter guard, bitter guard is Kerala, okay. So bitter, neem and bitter guard is very bitter, okay. So that, uh, so the animals doesn't come and eat the leaves of a neem and a bitter guard. So like this ways the plant protect themselves, not only plant, animals also protect themselves from their enemies okay so some uh, like uh, you already know like some ways in which animals protect themselves like porcupines have quills so porcupines so small porcupines which is having a quills okay for example while squid squid and inky liquid okay squid squid and inky liquid okay squid is an water okay so water animal that is a sea animal okay so sea based animal whenever a, an enemy goes and attacks the squid it squids out the what ink okay Okay, so it squeaks out, it removes the inks, okay, it's, uh, it splits out the ink, okay, so that enemy doesn't attack it and it by seeing the ink, it goes out, so it goes uh, far away from that squids, okay. Deer can run very fast, okay, so we know that deer can run very fast to protect itself, protect itself. Uh, so while rats, uh, rats and rabbits hide themselves in a burrows and toads have poisonous glands. Okay, so toads that is a baby of a frog is said to be an toads that is having a poisonous glands. Okay, so because of the poisonous glands, they are not uh, attacked by the any other any other I mean organisms. Okay, so the uh, snails, snails are having very I mean strong shell. Okay, so under which the snail body is uh, the strong sh snail uh, the strong shell covers the snail body okay so if any animals comes and attacks the snail it finds very hard okay not only the tortoise also tortoise are having very strong okay if you go and hit the tortoise nothing will bother the tortoise okay so the tortoise will not get any pain okay if suppose anybody hits us means what will happens okay we get pain okay and the, the uh, skin gets and the muscles get swell and up tortoise is not like that it is having a very thick shell okay so which protects their body these are all the preventions of animals okay <coughs> while many insects play dead okay some insects are playing acting um, playing very good acting very good like a dead okay so suppose if animal comes and uh, at, uh, wanted to attack that insect no it uh, behaves like it is dead okay so that the I mean um, the animal which came for hunting the insect no it feels like yeah the insect the insect is dead then why should I attack okay it leaves and goes okay so some insects are very good at playing dead okay now, all skills used for protection most interesting perhaps is camouflage okay so camouflage means blending with surroundings okay so all these things are very interesting among this one of the interesting is camouflage you have heard about the name camouflage it means converting our uh, color okay body color into that time in uh, that uh, surroundings okay so suppose if an insect is sitting on a leaf okay so that insect converts its I mean uh, blends its color according to the leaf color so that enemy cannot see enemy cannot identify the insect on a leaf okay that blending of color is said to be an 
camouflage okay so they blend with the leaves grasses or tree trunks where they move about some actually look like leaves or twigs so some insects if they blend according to their according according to the leaf if it sits on the leaf it uh, uh, turns into green if it's on the trunk of it turns into a brown so that enemy cannot see the properly so here and see your chapter if you have any doubt regarding this chapter you can contact me at night thank you